Good afternoon. Right, so first things first, I'm not a Dane. I have a beard. I think at the moment it's a very charming and handsome beard. You may disagree with me on that one. Uh, no, I jest. My name's Donald. I'm contributing a guest post on one of my favourite bands, who are the incomparable Bikini Girl, and the scene that grew up around them, the marvellous Riot Girl. Um, that's spelt with two or three R's instead of IRL, so G R R R L, because they're rebels. Um, I'm going to start with their opening line to one of their early tracks, basically sums it all up. We're Bikini Kill, and we want revolution girl style now. They weren't interested in joining in with a lot of other group movements. They wanted to say, listen, this is the music we want to play. We've come from the New York punk, from the um, Washington punk scene, uh, West Coast punk scene. They were bored with the fact they felt out of place at male punk gig, bands like Fugazi. Very left wing, very feminist anyway, but the fact you had guys pogoing in the front made them feel unsafe, unwelcome. So they wanted to create a completely different archetype of women's punk movement. Kathleen Hanna, who formed the band, um, came out of a very strong feminist family, was very involved with setting up women's refuge places, uh, with doing counselling sessions. In this sort of pre-internet era, when you were still at the, end, the fag end of the 80s, um, everybody she knew growing up had experienced some sort of abuse, some sort of harassment, any end of hassle from, from guys at school, from people in their family, from uncles. And she was seeing this all the time when she was running her counselling sessions or on, you know, at her women's refuges. And they needed some other way of getting girls in America talking to each other. And one of the ways to do this was by trying to restart the kind of the, the feminist movement that had staggered to the end. You know, there were you know Time magazine front pages in the mid eighties saying, Is feminism dead? You had the resurgence of the Republican Party trying to kind of uh, make big inroads into the freedoms that had been won in the sixties and seventies. There was talk of repeal of you know the right to abortion. And there were these girls saying, listen, no one's, no one's listening to us. No one's taking us seriously. And people are seriously trying to take back our freedoms and control. They, they viewed it, you know, the patriarchy was there, trying to get back control of women's bodies, putting women back in their place. And, yeah, so they found, they formed a band. Kathleen Hanna, uh, Kathy Wilcox, and a guy called Toby Vale, who um, regularly performed in dresses. Uh, and they caused a right stink. They got lots of people involved sending out newsletters, um, they encouraged lots of fanzines, they got lots of other people involved forming, um, forming bands that followed on, Bratmobile, Heavens to Betsy, they had counselling sessions after concerts, they got, they got right up the nose of everyone. They refused to talk much to the mainstream press because they were very concerned about how the mainstream press and mainstream media would take the image that they had and change it into something else. Um, and they made some really good music. It helps that I really like scratchy lo-fi punk music. It helps that I really like scratchy lo-fi punk music with girls screaming over on top of it. So bands like The Slits, X-Ray Specs, Raincoats, um, and, and Bikini Kill. But there's there's a core and a heart and a real honesty and a sense that they're actually really trying to create something, trying to kind of overcome and create a new archetype for what women in popular music can be that never ceases to amaze. There are very few other female artists or female-led bands that, that quite feel like there's that same kind of uh, uh, tinder about to, to catch fire that I get from listening to Bikini Kill. I mean, maybe a little bit of early PJ Harvey as well does the same sort of thing. Um, I find them really exciting. Yes, there are songs about um, domestic abuse. There are songs about child abuse. The issues that they felt no one was talking about. But then there are also songs like Double Dare You, where they're just shouting, girl, you have rights, you have rights. Um, songs like Rebel Girl, um, You're the Queen of My World, 
you know, people say that she's a dyke. Well, she is my best friend. Fuck, I don't care. I want to change clothes with her. That it, it's just about being confident in this new world, striking out in this world that they've created. And I, I worry that they've sort of been forgotten a little bit. And um, I would really like people to listen to them more. Um, go listen to Carnival. It's an awesome scratchy punk rock track. Uh, then get stuck into listening to the rest of what they've done. Um, they're, they, you know, band members went on to do other things. Um, parts of Slater Kinney. But for me, that that raw explosion of excitement that was the yeah the early Bikini Kill albums are it remains the kind of the the, the preeminent feminist punk rock manifesto for me when I'm wandering around town listening to it. Also, I think they were really cool and um, yeah, cool. Anyways, right, I'm gonna stop saying anything before I make a fool of myself. I've been Donald. It's been great chatting. See you later.